The readings today all speak about marriage and its importance in God's plan for the flourishing of individuals and families and society. And that it's important for us to remember that the teachings of Jesus and his church about marriage constitute an important key to the gospel. We can't leave this out. It is something very important. So we should strive to understand what he teaches and to live what he teaches and to hand on to future generations what Jesus taught us. This past week, we've been going through some things in the office and we came across some old photographs and some of them were from a wedding that happened here in 1957. It's very beautiful um, pictures, beautiful day. And we can all think about um, the days of weddings, you know, and how joyful they are. Many of you who are married can think about your own wedding day and all the joy that it brought with it. And this wedding took place 67 years ago. And I've been thinking about what has changed in those past 67 years. We know that uh, today less and less people are getting married and less and less people are getting married in the church and people are getting married uh, later in life. And there are many reasons for all of this, some good, some bad. But one thing that I want to um, propose today for us to think about is a simple idea, and that is how we see marriage in our life. Whether we see it as a capstone achievement in our life or a cornerstone to constructing a happy and successful life, either a capstone or a cornerstone. And this isn't my own idea. Much of what I have to say today comes from the research of many sociologists. But what is a, a capstone understanding of marriage? That is exemplified in the statement, well, I will get married when everything in my life is perfect, when I have personal, psychological, financial stability, when I have uh, finished my education, when I have a good job, when I've bought a house, when I've paid down my debt, and you could add more things, then I will get married. And many people have followed this route and, of course, have successful marriages and families. But in general, it, this presents challenges for us, and so I want to mention just three. If we have this capstone idea of marriage, it can lead to ineffective preparation for marriage because if you spend the majority of your young adult life thinking about yourself, then it can become a harder transition to marriage, which is all about self-giving love. And it can also create a history of multiple relationships, which is detrimental towards uh, future marriages. Secondly, it can lead to a resequencing of family formation. You know, people can begin to live together, they can cohabitate before marriage, which statistically speaking is detrimental towards married, marriage fidelity and stability. And it can lead to like what they call the sliding effect. You know, there's that uh, song today um, and it says, you know, you meet a girl, next thing you know, you're moving in, next thing you know, you're, you're uh, proposing, next thing you know, you're getting married. And meanwhile, you've never actually given it a lot of thought and made a good and purposeful decision for that marriage. And so that, that is, uh, you've just slid in your way into marriage. And that, that's not always good. And also, it can lead to, you know, of course, having children before marriage. And none of these things doom anybody. Um, and we shouldn't look down upon people in these situations. We should rather try to help them out, no matter where they are, and help them to make good decisions and extend to them the mercy that comes um, from our Christian faith, as Jesus taught us. But we know that there is an optimal sequence for forming families and one that's given to us by God. And it is uh, summarized by that nursery rhyme, first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes baby in the baby carriage, you know. Something that's important to insist because there is something God given about that. And third, this capstone idea can make marriage seem unattainable because it can say that there are so many hurdles that we have to cross first to be able to get married. Or we can hear people say, uh, I can't afford marriage which uh, to be married, which means that they can't afford a really expensive wedding, which uh, today is kind of the norm. On the other hand, we could see marriage as a solid cornerstone 
on which to frame together the walls, windows, and rooms of a meaningful life for a couple and their children. And this has its own challenges too, but it represents an important model for marriage today. And a few considerations about this. First of all, of couples that are going to be married need to have maturity. We're not advocating for immature people um, becoming married. They need to have some requisite maturity. Secondly, it's important to carefully select a spouse. This is the, perhaps the most important decision a person will ever make that will change, obviously, the rest of their lives. And so it should be a decision that is, that is uh, taken with prayer and discerning what does God want from me? Is this the person that God wants me to marry, marry, to join my life to? It would also include getting advice from prudent people, including parents, because they have a lot of experience. They can help make a good decision. They can help avoid a disastrous choice. By the way, the patron saint of finding a spouse is uh, Saint Raphael, um, who is uh, the archangel from the book of Tobit. And he's the one that brought Tobiah and Sarah together. And so you can ask him to pray for that. And then thirdly, another thing that's important is that uh, couples have preparation in advance of their marriage. We do this at the church and in the parish. Uh, we call this uh, marriage preparation. And this is more proximate, right? The, the few months leading up to marriage, uh, very important. But the most important preparation for marriage happens all the way throughout the rest of your um, life before that in the family home where a solid and lasting human and Christian foundation is laid and this is really important that we prepare our children for their vocation in life whatever it might be and to help them to be the kind of person that can enter into these things well and if we do these things uh, this will be a, a flourishing culture of marriage and if if, uh, if all these things are met, then we should encourage our children and grandchildren to enter into the beautiful sacrament of holy matrimony. But of course, not everyone's called to marriage. Some are called to religious life or to priesthood. But all the work that we've done to prepare our children will help them in those vocations as well. And we cannot forget those who are single for whatever reason. They too are close to the heart of Jesus and to the church. Oftentimes, their lives can be of great benefit to the church and to society. And we know that no one is without a family in this world because the church is a home and family for everyone. And so I hope that we'll see that marriage is vital for us today. It's important for the gospel message to be transmitted. And so whatever we can do, we should try and strive with God's grace to do that and to build up our local community, our parish, and our families. So it's very important, and we can all have a part to play. If we work together, we can make this a beautiful and thriving uh, culture of formation for marriage, priesthood, religious life, whatever our children are called to.